Hello and welcome to uh, my channel. The purpose of this video is to show you how to make Rochelle uh, crystals uh, for the demonstration of piezoelectric uh, power production. So this is uh, the end product and I'll just show you how I got there. The first step is to make take some sodium bicarbonate which is baking soda and convert it into sodium carbonate. So that's what we'll do next. Morning folks and uh, welcome to this video. I'm gonna make some sodium carbonate. Got an outdoor burner here and a pan, stainless steel pan. And I've got like about a pound, which is uh, 453 grams of baking soda, generic baking soda. I'm gonna pour that in the pan and heat that up for about 45 minutes, one hour with some simmering. The um, bicarbonate soda has a fairly powdery appearance. It's a bit like icing sugar. It sticks to the uh, sticks to the spoon. I'm about one hour of roasting this stuff on the fire. And it's become much more granular, and it doesn't. It no longer sticks to the to the spout or the metal. It just falls right off it. It's much coarser in texture. And all the steaming and uh, little little uh, CO2 volcanoes have disappeared. So that's a sign that it's probably all gone to uh, washing soda or sodium carbonate. So there you go. Let me um, turn the fire on. What we have now is we're heating up some water here. We want to get this to about, this water is uh, filtered water, but you can use distilled water or just water out of a water filter. Uh, it's in a Pyrex dish, and the, disc is, the dish is actually floating, so you want to make sure it's not touching the metal sides of the pan. And then, and that's the pan, and in there is just regular tap water. And I'm heating this to about 180 degrees are the, are those things the Are those things the crystals? Not yet, we're going to do that right next. So what we're doing is just getting this heated up to about um, 180 degrees Fahrenheit and then I'm going to start dissolving the cream of tartar and I have it ready here. I've got a total of um, two of these. So this is a total of 140 grams of cream of tartar which I'm going to dissolve in that 175 cc's of water. So I'm slowly dissolving this cream of tartar in this 175 cc's of water. The temperature is about 180. And it doesn't dissolve, it's not very solid. It's partially, it's more solid, but like 180. So once it's all kind of suspended in this in this liquid, I'm gonna add the add the uh, sodium carbonate. And I have the sodium carbonate here, which we made earlier. So there we go. Okay, I have it all, I have all the um, cream of tartar added now. And I've just got a fairly homogeneous suspension here. Now I'm going to start adding the sodium carbonate. This anhydrous sodium carbonate. What I'm doing is adding the sodium carbonate right now. It's fairly effervescent. I'm going to start stirring it in a minute. Try not to have it come right out of the dish. just starting to sludge at the bottom so it needs to be stirred while the addition Ew. is done. That last spoon I just added generated a bit more CO2, you can see it here. I think one more and we should be done with it. And it's almost totally, totally translucent. I just added a speck more of sodium carbonate and now it's really translucent and no more CO2 so I think the reaction's totally done. So now we're going to get ready to filter. Ready to 
I'm not filtering the solution and got rid of all the particulate matter. Just using like a plastic funnel, the coffee filter, and there's the clear solution in there. So we're going to cover this over with some um, uh, some film, stretch film, and leave it to crystallize. We'll put it in a room temperature place and let it cool slowly. This is after I transferred the uh, mixture to a plastic container glass. Doesn't seem to do it too well, so I put it in plastic and I just let it sort of, sort of cool down. And what I've done is I've just pour, uh, poured off the mother liquor. It's not the best looking crystals, but anyway, I've got a whole bunch of them here. And there's probably still some more mother liquor in there, as you can see. Look, if I just tilt it, there it goes. So I want to pour off as much of that as I can. Then I just put the rest of this onto like some uh, kitchen towels, just some kitchen uh, paper, and just let it soak out all soak out all the rest of that mother liquor. And then I'm going to test some of these crystals out. So uh, anyway, at least I've got crystals, which is a good good sign. Some of those don't look quite white, those needle shaped crystals are a bit too thin. But the larger ones, I might be able to find something in there that I can use as a test uh, piece for making some piezoelectricity. Alright, well thanks. Uh, this far, we'll uh, get some of these out and dry them off and see what they look like. Okay, I've taken one of the bigger crystals. This is actually not a great crystal, it's kind of a conglomerate of smaller ones and I've connected it to a digital oscilloscope here and I'm just going to scan and then just simply touch the crystal and then I'm going to try tapping it and doing other things to see the piezoelectric effects. So let's go ahead and do that. It's going to start scanning and I'm just going to touch this with my finger. What I'm doing is just scratching the surface of it. It's much like the old gramophone, the old records actually, the old um, uh, record players of the 60s, 70s and 80s um, had a little tiny needle in them with a, a Rochelle salt crystal that would generate a tiny electric current as it passed over the vinyl and that current would be amplified and give you sound, so it's the same basic principle here. You can use quartz as well, uh, so let's just uh, reset this again and uh, Do it and uh, uh, tap it this time. I'm going to tap it with my finger, like that. And you can see tapping it also produces nice, uh, nice little uh, effects. Let's reset that again. trouble resetting this. Okay, there it goes. So I'm going to tap it in different places to see if it's positive. It's negative here. Tap it in another place. It's positive there. So depending on where you tap it, it can be positive, negative, or somewhere in the middle. So, uh, wonderful effect. I'm pretty happy that worked for such a poor quality uh, conglomerate mess of crystals here. I'm going to probably end up redissolving these and um, cooling them down under different conditions to make a, make larger crystals. But uh, I'm pretty happy that worked with such a such a poor quality uh, Rochelle salt crystal. But anyway, it does show the effect of piezoelectricity. And uh, I thank you for watching.